the forehead of your robot. I really don't know what to say anymore. There really hasn't been much out of me over the past three days because of that horrible experience. Has anyone heard of Vaggy Tales? I've been a big fan of it ever since I got my first DVD, which was Rack Shack and Benny. The show was really good in my eyes because of the characters, stories, morals and humor. However I have outgrown the show because I've gotten older, and I'm glad I did, because there's these new redesigns and this spin-off called, Vaggy Tales in the House, which to me is kind of a guilty pleasure. I still have a bunch of DVDs and even some old VHS tapes. I've watched all of them except one. Its name was Where's God When I'm Scared. I've actually had it before, but after I got it and was about to watch it, I couldn't find it. So I decided to go to my old buddy Amazon to look for, not a re-release, not a remaster, but the original. I searched for it but couldn't find a copy until I got to the bottom of the results. The title of the item said, Vaggy Tales 1993, Where's God When I'm Scared VHS Tape, Good As New. I couldn't wait to get it in the mail. About a week later my aunt and uncle, who I was living with at the time, were going on a trip. They said if I ever needed them to call them. At least I can watch the tape without being disturbed because my sister is also gone at a friend's house as well. Right after they left, the mailman came and put something in the mailbox, most likely a package from the yellow wrapping I could see around it. So after he left I checked the mailbox and sure enough it was my package. I grabbed it and went into the house into my room, shut the door behind me and started opening it up. After I opened it up I started to look at the tape's condition, because you know that Amazon could get you something that looks brand new on the picture of the item, but then you wind up getting a sand-filled GameCube. The tape's box art looked like it was poorly copied off of Google Images, and the actual tape didn't have a label. Geez Amazon, thank you very much. I said in a sarcastic way, even though I was really happy to get the tape. Since I have an old VCR, thanks to the 80s, that I got from my uncle and barely use anymore. I put in the VHS tape and pressed play. For some reason it took 9 minutes to get it working, I'm guessing because of the bad condition. After waiting for 9 minutes, which felt longer because I was excited to watch it. The tape finally began. It seemed like everything was normal at first for the first 15 minutes of the tape. It was a great episode that had a great lesson, God is bigger than any monster out there, followed by a funny silly song called, The Water Buffalo Song. About when I was going to finish the other 15 minutes after the silly song, it seemed like the tape got preempted because it showed a black screen for about 3 minutes. Not only was I upset because I thought the tape didn't work after 15 minutes, or was recorded over the actual show, I was also mad that it seemed like I was scanned out of 10 bucks. But after a little complaining the show seemed to restart, because it showed the intro again. I was a little curious because the show normally doesn't restart, unless it's over and you hear the tape rewinding inside the VCR, but it didn't, and I didn't hear the tape rewind inside. When the actual show started, it showed Bob and Larry standing on the countertop as usual, but for some reason, the atmosphere felt different. Almost depressing. I mean Bob and Larry were smiling, and the background was bright and colorful, but for some reason it felt depressing. Everything was about normal until they started reading the letter. Bob read the letter out loud, and it said. Dear Bob and Larry. I am a mother of two, and my youngest son died in a car accident last night. His dad fell asleep on the wheel and crashed into a tree. He was fine but my son was killed. I don't know what to do anymore, I just hope you understand what I've been going through. Michelle. Bob looked really upset with the letter, and Larry didn't say anything clever or funny, which is kind of out of character for him. The show interrupted Bob and Larry before they could say anything. The show started up with Junior watching TV at night in the living room, probably the same scene from Where's God When I'm Scared, with the familiar Mama Asparagus saying, Junior, it's time for bed! with Junior saying, J Just four more minutes. But he decides to turn off the television and go to his room. He hopped up the stairs and enters into his room. However he is extremely scared, even more than he was when watching the TV show. He thought, 
Yes, the show is scary, but it isn't real, is it? Junior goes to sleep and we get treated to his dreams, or nightmares. There was a lot of flashing colors and shapes with Junior in the dream world. After about 30 seconds, I heard a loud booming low voice that sounded like my TV speakers were at 100%. However my volume was turned down to 10%. The voice said. You are weak. Jungle. Disgraceful. No one. This part shocked me the most. I was jump scared by the monster that Junior watched on the TV, except it looked a lot more demented. Junior woke up with not a scream, not a cry, but instead a shocked face. It cut to two days later. Bob and Larry were with Mum and Dad Asparagus. The dad said. Junior hasn't come out of his room in two days. Is he sick? Is he coming down with something? Is he injured? We don't know because he never told us. They entered his room. Junior looked a lot worse than from the last time we saw him. He was laying straight on his bed staring straight up with red bloodshot eyes, and was drooling out of a gaping mouth. Bob closed his eyes and said. Junior looks like he's in a really bad condition. This was the first time I had seen Bob this serious. They cut to Junior again but he was shaking rapidly and started foaming out of the mouth, he seemed like he was crying as well. It cut to a hospital building, where a doctor that looked like Archibald, said in his British accent. Junior hasn't slept in three days. He looks like he's shocked, almost in a coma state. His mom said to Junior. We didn't know you were scared, Junior. You should have told us. This was getting really disturbing and getting uncomfortable to watch. They saw that the beeper, the thing that tells you if the heart is still beating in beeps, went flat. Archie then said to them. I'm sorry everyone, but Junior is dead. It was really sad, I felt like I was going to cry because Junior was one of my favorite characters in the show. It cuts to a picture of the Asparagus family with Mom Asparagus crying in the background while mixed in with the words. He's gone. I can't bring him back. I can't live like this anymore. Then it showed Mom Asparagus in the kitchen, reaching in a medicine cabinet, pulling out a bottle of pills. She finishes with the following words. When you lose someone, you will always feel pain, until you can't feel at all. She opens up the bottle, pours all the pills in her mouth, then passes out. The final shot is an image of the asparagus family. It cuts back to the countertop, where Bob and Larry are even sadder from when they read the letter. Then Bob said in a sad voice. It's time to talk to Cord about what we learned today. Cordy didn't work though, and Bob was getting angry at the former for not working. He starts bouncing off of Cordy like a ball getting angrier every time. Larry even told Bob to stop or he might get hurt. Bob charged at the computer, and when he hit it, he splattered into pieces of tomato juice and chunks. Larry ran off crying, he then went to the edge of the countertop and said to the audience in a sad voice while staring at the camera. Remember kids? God made you special. He loves you very much. Goodbye. Larry then jumps off the counter, and when he hits the floor, he smashes into pieces. Then the episode ended with no credits, just nothing. This was a very shocking experience for me. I didn't know who made the episode. I don't even know if I was dreaming or not. I couldn't sleep for two days. I kept on getting nightmares about the following episode. The next day, I decided to email Big Idea, the company that makes Veggie Tales, about this strange and disturbing episode. I didn't get a response until two weeks later, and the email said, To whom it concerns. From, Big Idea. Subject, Disturbing Veggie Tales 1993, Where's God When I'm Scared? Reply. We are sorry, we have never made anything as disturbing or demented as you have described for us. But we understand your worry, so we think you should get rid of it and anything else that might worry you. And remember, God made you special, and loves you very much. Big idea. I took their word for it, then I took the tape, along with my Veggie Tales DVDs, VHS tapes and even my Bob and Larry plushies that I've had since I was little, and threw them in the garbage. I tried to tell other people about it, even my closest friends and my aunt and uncle, but they didn't believe me. 
I was watching the news on TV, and there was a news story about a father and son, who was driving last night and crashed into a tree. The father survived with few injuries but the son died, and the mother was named Michelle. That's strange, because there was something similar to the letter that Bob and Larry read. So the next day, I decided to take a drive around my home state Arizona. After a few hours of driving, I found myself at the Grand Canyon, so I parked my car there and went to the edge. I looked down into the rocky floor at the bottom of the canyon. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear, your God will come, he will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Isaiah 35 4